was it uh, three months, six months? I don't know where you're going. The, the uh, composting class. That oh, you my took. composting class? Yeah, how long ago was that? Um, June. June. Yeah, June, it was in so June. about three months ago. It was. I, I get a text from uh, Mr. Gilstrap that says, I am uh, with someone who you know, and we are uh, <laughs> doing uh, composting. I said, must be Melanie Files. Yes. Right? Melanie Files. Master comp certified master composter. Thank you, sir. Melanie Files. Rick Lohman, too. Good to see you, sir. Thank, Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having us. Uh, I have the wrong. Do I have the wrong microphone up for you? Because I could barely hear you. Speak again, please. Yo, thank you. There That's you it. That's, That's it. the one. Those mics got switched. All right. I use my teacher's voice. You won't need this. <laughs> <laughs> so where you been? Where have I been? It's been like five. I don't know, six, seven, eight, ten years since you've been on. I wasn't asked. See, there well, you. Go. You weren't asked before either. You were just saying, "Hey, I need to come on the show." <laughs> I just show up and go, I'm like a bad penny. You know? <laughs> yeah. Been hanging out. Yeah. Doing stuff, working in my garden and teaching composting, master composting classes. I, how was this guy in your class? I heard he sent a text while he was in class. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he did. Because yeah. and I got I got the I got the teacher glare. <laughs> the teacher glare? I did get the teacher glare. I, and the I, raised I, and the raised uh, eyebrow. Uh, yes, I did. Yes, it, was, it was fairly. It's yeah. coming back. No, the I'm, chills are returning. I'm told when he was in high school, he was the same obstinate child. Well, thank goodness I didn't teach him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in high school, Mrs. Stafford, um, we didn't get along very well, and. <laughs> She actually is my Imagine senior. Imagine that. She, it was my <laughs> senior year. I think it was towards the end, and she pulled me aside and she said, "Clearly, I have nothing <laughs> to offer you in this class. I will give you an A. I'm not making this up. I will give you an A on the single condition that you never set foot in my classroom again." <laughs> Where was this? Robinson Secondary School in Fairfax County, Virginia. And I said, if you'll say that in front of Mr. Good. Blanton, the principal, you got a deal. And he just looked confused. And I wasn't allowed to leave campus. I had to go sit in the library. <laughs> <laughs> what was the class? What was it teaching? Um, forensics. Speaking. Forensics. Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Imagine. Imagine that. Oh, no. Awful. That was great. What do you mean, awful? It was great. <laughs> he got an A and didn't have to show up. Oh... The and now you see academic welfare. The teacher in me is cringing. I just yes. want you to know that. <laughs> you want to reach across and smack him on the head, don't you, Melanie? No, I just give him the evil eye and raise the eyebrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So uh, let's uh, let's get into it here. With uh, it's it's October uh, as of Sunday, right? Right. So I've got a garden out there as well that's about to fall apart. I've got uh, some pepper plants and tomato plants that are having their last hurrah. Mm -hmm. I would suspect the remnants of that would become part of a good compost pile. It depends. On? Uh, do you have any fungus stuff on your tomatoes? Uh, no, but I do on the peppers. Okay. Then I, I'm cringing when I say this. There are two ways to, to deal with this. Yes. If you've got fungus on it, then and you're not going to do a hot pile. Remember that, John? Mm, I do. Okay. That's what Rick does. That's his specialty. The hot if you're pile. not not doing a hot yeah. pile, then the best thing to do is send it to the landfill. Because of the fungus. Yes. What will happen if it just falls into the ground? Uh, the spores will stay there. Oh darn! Yeah. How do I know if it's got a fungus? Look at the leaves. They look crappy. They don't look nice and green and all that. And they have spots all over them. And some of them will turn yellow and brown. So no, the the leaves look pretty good. But this is on the peppers. That some of the peppers have some weird discoloration. Oh, it's, the, if it's the peppers, don't worry about it. And the skin of the peppers is like, I don't know, melting away or something. That's, That's the weird. compost pile. Now that can go in the compost yeah. pile. Yeah. Okay, the so other, so why the peppers, but not but but the, but if it's the leaves, it's different. Yes, because the leaves will do their thing. Um, the thing with the other thing you can do. You can take your pepper plants and your tomato plants somewhere like in a corner of your yard, mm -hmm. dig a hole, drop them in, and just leave them. Well, I'm Sicilian. That'll be easy for me. I, I wouldn't touch that. <laughs> the holes are all pre-dug. <laughs> just have to wait, put something into it. Just in case. <laughs> you, you always want to have one ready, John. You know, you write books. I do, yeah. That's you what understand. our younger daughter has always said, because I have one, the one long compost pile back in the corner, and that's my coal pile. I'm not going to do any hard work with that. Just dig a hole, drop stuff in. And our younger daughter has said, well, what happens, you know, if I should die? I said, well, you you could fit in the compost pile. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all just deteriorate away. And I'm not Sicilian either. Yeah. You know? See? 
So uh, hot pile, cold pile, uh, what's the difference here? Obviously besides the temperature, but what makes one what? And I'll other? leave that to you, dear. Uh, the hot pile, you build that with a combination of the what they call browns or carbon-based things like leaves, uh, s- straw, hay, dried hay, um, newspaper, um, and then the greens are your organic materials like your leaves, green grass, well, green leaves, uh, fresh leaves, uh, dried leaves or brown, um, and kitchen scraps, anything like that, or mm-hmm. like your garden garden scraps, the fresh garden scraps would be the green. And you layer those together and build a pile, ideally at least a three-foot cube, three by three by three, so you have volume to, um, and then that gets hot, can get up to 160 degrees. Why and does it that, get hot? It gets hot because the microbes initially in the that are naturally there um, are starting to break down the carbon and the reaction between the carbon and the nitrogen to the um, from the leaves and grass. That's usually what I do is mostly is leaves and grass. And that creates heat, and the microbes start breaking that down. In the mm-hmm. first phase, this goes up to, like, say, 160 degrees within. If you build the pile right within 24 hours uh, to 48 hours, you'll go from ambient temperature, you know, say, 80 degrees when you build it, to uh, up to um, the 160. Stay there for about two weeks, 10 days, two weeks, maybe three weeks, depending on how well the pile's built. And you also you're adding water while you're building the pile. And then uh, that continues to break down, and you'll turn the pile every two to three weeks as the temperature starts dropping. And also the volume in the pile will start dropping down. And that um, then after the heat part breaks down, you let the pile sit, and then that's when you actually have uh, um, other critters come in that you'll Mm -hmm. see, um, centipedes, millipedes, um, uh, different types of beetles and worms and that finishes breaking it down so within uh, a well-maintained commercial pile which is as large as this building um it's turned with um, some have compared it to that yes yes (laughs) (laughs) while while i'm in it yes i won't touch that one Um, and in a coal pile you're just adding things randomly and you're not worried about whether you have too much leaves too much uh um the organic matter and it'll break down over a longer period of time and it takes a year or more for that to and, and, and to what end at the end of the product you do what i sift it because does this I, become soil or, or no it's still compost it okay. is you have made compost the thing is the what what i do i'm not going to go through all that hard work of mowing grass and mowing leaves and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. um i just have an area set aside we have like eight or nine compost piles and the one my my big one is the one that i just go out and i grind stuff up in the kitchen i have a dedicated blender (laughs) it's like never ask for a smoothie at my house (laughs) (laughs) i have a dedicated blender grind up everything i can yeah and pour it into a bucket so you get a slurry and then after the slurry you take that out the compost pile dig a hole about oh we can see this okay about six or so inches drop it in there, cover it over, then I have a stake and I just move it from place to place. Mm -hmm. So next time I go out, I know to move it that place, dig it that place. Um, The only thing that usually digs in the compost pile is those squirrels trying to bury nuts. And stop it, you Mm -hmm. know, they don't listen to me, but anyway. They they don't. No, they don't. But that way, just move up and down. How big is that thing, 11 feet Um, long by four feet wide? But well, it's about five by uh, twelve. Yeah. Why do we want to create a compost pile? Why do you want to throw everything in the garbage? Well, that's that's the answer I'm looking for. Well, you're yeah, reducing yeah. reducing what goes to the landfill, uh, which creates um, that's one that creates one of the methane gases and mm-hmm. off gases that come yep. out of compost piles, plus the leachate that goes down. Oh yeah. And even in a a really well built um, landfill has a liner in it. But those liners can break down, and then, mm-hmm. particularly depending on type of soil, this area it's really bad because we have so so much karst that anything that goes down the ground can go down and get into the groundwater very quickly. So, um, you 
by taking organic matters out, um, yard waste and kitchen scraps and composting them, you're reducing what's going to a landfill, but you're also putting that back into your garden on the land to improve, uh, which reduces you having to use commercial um, chemicals, fertilizers, mm -hmm. herbicides, pesticides. I had a pile of grass clippings. I used to bag my clippings and I'd throw them in a pile uh, oh. right behind my yard in the woods. And <clears throat> over the course of a year or so, it turned into this wonderful pile of dirt. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to spread it around as basically as topsoil. A lot of folks say the reason that they don't compost is because it stinks. And they'll say, well, I took all my grass clippings, I left them in a pile, and they stink and they're slimy and I'm going yeah but did you add anything else to it what you're doing is throwing it over someplace where it can do it naturally leave it alone you don't worry about smell mm -hmm. but for someone who's in a small yard ick you know I'm, I'm with you on that one it's just we, we've had people go it just makes too much noise you know <laughs> because there's critters getting in there it's like no they're not getting in the slime you just think they are uh -huh. Um, if you leave it long enough, yes, it'll do that. Yeah. But if you throw a few leaves in it, uh, we were at someone's house yesterday who had taken the class before, right before COVID, and he was so excited, and he said, I've got four compost piles. Do you want to see them? It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. You know, I'm, I want to come down and see your compost piles. He's got four humongous where he'd used just wire and put it around and dumped his, he has one tree that conveniently drops leaves yeah. consistently. He said, so I just mow the leaves in the grass and throw them in these piles. And so that he's gonna have beautiful compost just for these two things. Even though it's a hot pile, he didn't have to do a lot of work for it, which yeah. is kind of cool. And, and that was what was happening with the grass piles because it was in mm -hmm. the woods, the leaves would then fall on top yes. of it. And then every new year I've got free topsoil, yeah. basically. Yeah. And well, if you mix more leaves in it, uh, or mixed leaves with the grass pile, it'll break down faster, faster. and also yeah. be a, a better balance of yeah. green material. leaves or fallen leaves, dead leaves. The the dead, dead. leaves are mm -hmm. preferably yeah. Okay. One one of the things that that people uh, try to tell people is to me composting is um, it's the ultimate recycling project because whatever you take out of the soil, whether it is grass or leaves or your kitchen scraps or any of that. I've actually put in a, uh, an old cotton pot holder. It's cotton, it came from the soil. Put it in the compost pile, and then it becomes compost and you're putting it back onto the soil. So you have recycled what came from the soil back into the soil. Remember man that you are dust and unto dust you shall return. Yeah, yeah that too. Also if you, aren't, when you're talking about the landfills and the cost that anybody that has uh, uh, solid waste service, whether it be in the city or the county, that they're paying a fee for that. <clears throat> and that's because they have to pay a tipping fee, which mm -hmm. is a fee to actually dump it at the landfill. If you reduce that and that materials were, instead of going in landfills, and landfills have a, a limited lifetime. They, depending on the size of them, 10, 20, maximum 30 years, then you got to build another one. But if you reduce that, um, you have less waste going in the landfill. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like recycling. It's another form of recycling, as Melanie said, that you're recycling your kitchen scraps, your yard waste, and instead of putting them in the landfill, uh, it's same as taking your plastics, your metal um, newspaper, and keeping that out of landfill. So less that goes in landfill, the longer they'll last. And when it comes to leachate at the landfills, and you're right, they have they are built with liners and all of that, and, and we'll stipulate that the liners can leak. By definition, the, the materials that we would compost and therefore keep out of the landfill, that's not the kind of leachate we ha need to worry about, is it? Not completely. You're, you're correct. That It's also the other really bad things that uh, we dump, the people that uh, uh, dump poisons such as... Um, yeah, right. but we're uh, not going to be composting that. Right, no. No. no so definitely not. And that's the, where this comes in is that leachate that develops in the bottom because it rains and water gets down in there. That's pumped out and goes into a tank and then they have to run that through a uh, purifying system just like a, oh. similar to a um, uh, 
sewage facility and that's trucked off and treated so that you know in case there is leaks in the liner it doesn't get in but that's the problem is if the liner leaks you don't get that leachate out and it gets down mm -hmm. in the soil yeah. but yes there's so much stuff that gets into that leachate that um, but you're by taking kitchen scraps the wet stuff out mm -hmm. you have less of that to be in there so melanie i, I having taken your class i think it's really important for you to pass along what is your favorite brand of garbage disposal <laughs> john <laughs> see i get kicked out of classes Be so. <laughs> better that he texted in class than ask you that question yeah no my, my story with that is when we bought the house we're in now uh we had to have the countertops and the sink replaced because the other stuff was like 10 years old and it was really not in good shape so we get ready to get everything together and the plumber looked at me and he said uh, something about putting the disposal back in the sink and I said absolutely not I said I will not have one and he was like well what happens when you sell the house I said when I'm they're taking me out feet first and whoever wants the disposal they can put it in there because I'm not having one what I really would like to have and <laughs> John if y'all can find one of these it's a disposal in your sink but it is piped out into a bucket on the other side of your wall so whatever you grind up is already what I do in my blender, I would have to get rid of my blender, good Lord. Um, just right out there in the bucket, take it out of the garden and you're done. So, but yeah, my poor plumber, he just, he said, what are you gonna do when you sell this house? I said, I'm not selling the house, I'm dying in this house. <laughs> <laughs> John, why did you take a master composter class? Uh, Joyce signed us up. <laughs> yeah. as that. Was, he and, does what he's told. That's right. Smart it, man. It, it seemed like a good idea. You know, I, it, it's, it's a lot more, uh, the the hot pile I realized early on that's just not a starter I don't I don't have that level of energy but the coal pile is kind of an interesting concept of um, the hard part so far and I will tell you we we haven't been good practitioners um, it, it's just it's inconvenient until it's not you know until it becomes part of the daily routine it has to be it's just kind of a, an inconvenient thing to do mm -hmm. and the muscle memory of throwing something into the trash can is almost insurmountable. As put your, it, as it put turns your trash out. can away from your sink. Ours is on the other side of the room. Oh, no. I can't do that. But there's, <laughs> Why but not? Also, Why not, John? I just designed a house and moved into it. I'm not moving stuff. Uh, but also, to be clear, isn't it, isn't it true, <laughs> yeah. when, when people talk about compost piles, we are, animal waste does not belong in a compost pile. Oh, is that right? No. It that is, is not, not right. right. Oh, that okay. I right. thought I thought you never. John, you slept. Through... No, you were texting. I was that. not. Uh -huh, uh -huh, I was doing uh -huh. business. No, I. Somebody told me. I thought it was in your class that you don't put anything in the compost pile that you're not willing to eat. That you're not willing to have part of. Who would because... you take a class from, dude? You were there. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe I got this from someplace else. But it, and I don't mean you're going to eat the compost. But it's the okay. But then you I'm do. wrong. I'll just stop talking. The hole's getting bigger here. <laughs> no, I just stopped talking. <laughs> that hole you have for the compost pile, you may have to jump in. We we do compost. What we, what we told John mm -hmm. and everybody else in the class is that you can compost, and we do, but it goes in my blender, little pieces of meat. Of course, you're not going to compost a five-pound roast, mm -hmm. you know, or large pieces of anything. But if you can cut them up, get them small, they can mix in with all your other food scraps. You dig them down, and animals can't smell it. If you can't smell it, you don't know it's there. Mm -hmm. So when people say, oh, it's going to get rats, it's like, when was the last time you saw a rat in Martinsburg that wasn't downtown? Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, well, sorry. Oops. Hey, you can uh, say what you want to say. <laughs> being not correct. Rats go to cities. That's what they do. They, well, they do. Uh, and we live in the city. That's mm -hmm. the thing. We live in the city. We live not far from the other radio station, by mm -hmm. the way. Just in case. You need I used to work that. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we do that. We put little pieces of meat because uh, we usually don't have a lot of bones. Uh, bones do have a, have a bone pile. I have a container that's only for bones. How do you break a bone down? You don't. You let Mother Nature do it over a couple of years. It only take a couple of years? Not not the big bones like this. If mm -hmm. I knew somebody had really good dogs, they could chew on those bones. Someone gave them to me from a soup, and I went, I didn't know there were that many. Um, but, yeah, some of the small chicken bones, yeah. after a couple of years, you break them up, and you've got your own bone meal. So it just it works. But, yeah, small pieces of meat can go in there. Just dig them down. If you have a dog that digs... We had a doctor tell us that. He said, I have dogs that dig. I said, get a tumbler. Okay. We're, we're talking different kinds of animal waste here. I'm thinking poop. Oh, oh dog poop? Oh, yeah. Poop sugar. Okay, you can. 
Yeah? Okay. Okay. I swear he was texting. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can see why the teacher told him to never come Jeez. back to her class again, can't you? <laughs> what? Melanie, do you see what I deal with every day here? Oh, I'm so sorry. You know what? I'm, <laughs> please, sympathize with me. Let, let's sympathize with joy. <laughs> <laughs> What you do, and this, this was one of the things we learned in Texas when we did our master composter training, is you can dig a trench and put your cat stuff and your dog stuff, and then cover it over, and then go to the next spot, the next spot, the next spot. What happens is Mother Nature will break down all that waste. You do not use that on your vegetables. Okay. You can use it on your shrubs. Okay. I'm vindicated here. Not really. You were halfway. I'm, I'm, not, I'm taking the vindication. You're, you're approach. Isn't it time for a break? You're, <laughs> it is actually. Your, your, your approach was noble, but lacking. Had you not been texting that day in class, you would have gotten the whole story. He was probably texting you. He, he may have been. Actually, came, that might have been the. He text. came up to me later and he said, "Well, you know, there was Rob who wanted to talk to you and blah." blah. I'm going, "What?" <laughs> hey, we'll be back with the final minute after.